Hi, I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Alex. And we here at CERN in School Lab, CERN's hands-on learning laboratory for high school students. I'm pretty sure you heard about ATLAS, the largest detector at the LHC. Today, we want to show you how you can build the detector on your own. Yeah, well, actually, you can't build the whole detector because, unfortunately, it's huge. It's 46 meters in length. But what you can do, if you have a 3D printer at home, you can print and build your own model of the ATLAS magnet system. Yeah, and our summer student, Thiago, designed this model and he will give you now a step-by-step -step tutorial. 3D printing opens new opportunities to build a model. We need to design every single piece and make sure everything fits together. Now the good thing is, you don't need to do this step, because we've uploaded everything to Thingiverse.com, where you can access all the 3D files for free. Here is a link on the video, also available on the description. After downloading the 3D files to build your model, these are the things you will need. A 3D printer, super glue to hold the pieces together, make sure the glue you have works for PLA plastic. We've used a multi-purpose cyanoacrylate, a cutter or some tool to help remove the support structures of the prints, at least 500 meters of copper wire with diameter of half a millimeter, pliers to handle and cut the wire. We have also used the lighter together with some thick wire to drill some holes in the coil frames to make the coils, solder and the solder iron to connect the coils together, and completing the model with two connectors allows it to be connected with leads to a power supply. For a complete model, you will need to print 4 feet, 16 inner struts, 16 outer struts and 8 coil frames. This takes around 58 hours of total printing time. Some pieces are better printed with support structures, which must be removed afterwards. And for better results, the two halves of each coil frame can be glued together. Place it on a flat surface and wait while it dries. To make the coils, start by drilling two small holes on either side of the coil frame. Then start winding the copper wire, making for example 80 turns on each coil. With every component printed and the coils ready, we can start assembling the model. You can move it a bit around. No. For better results, it is better to glue it together. Glue and clamps. We can use a ruler to know where to glue the struts. I will put them two and a half centimeters from this side. Make sure you place the coils in the right way so that the magnetic fields might add up when the coils are connected in series, that is, with the winding going in the same way. If you use clamps to secure the pieces while they glue, make sure not to apply too much pressure, otherwise it might damage the pieces. Now we just need to connect the coils in series. The copper wire has an insulating coating, so first you need to remove this. How to remove isolation properly from a, a lacquered wire. Take a solder iron, put a lot of solder on the tip so you get a tiny little solder ball there. You have another enough temperature on the iron, so 400 something degrees at least. And then you take the tip and you go slowly over the wire and because it's so hot it will re remove the whole isolation. That's it. Then just solder the two wires together. And do this all around for all the coils. <laughs> Many more to go. <laughs> Thanks, Thiago. This is really beautiful, but 
Do you have any idea what we can do with that? Uh, let's have a look. It has two banana sockets, so I would just connect it to a power supply. Okay, so now we have a power supply here, connected to the Atlas model. In series, we also connect the multimeter to monitor the current. And when I switch on the power supply now, you see that we can measure 0.4 amps of current going through the copper wire of the coils here. So once we have current go going through coils, we should be able to measure a magnetic field. The strength of a magnetic field, you can measure, for example, with a hall probe. Our device looks like this. Um, it has a sensor here, and if I go with the sensor into the magnetic field of our model, you can measure 0 0.7 millitesla. Quite good. Yeah, really strong magnetic field. What the whole probe can't tell us is how the direction of the field looks like, what the shape of the field is. For this, to find out this, you can use a 3D compass like this. It has a tiny magnet attached in the center, and the direction of this magnet will show you later the direction of the magnetic field. So now let's dive our 3D compass into the model, and you see how the magnet aligns along the magnetic field. If I go out of the coils, you see how the magnet turns. But if you follow the path in between the coils like this, you will find out that the magnetic field inside looks like a donut. Yeah, it's a ring-shaped magnetic field like this. And this is actually also how the magnetic field of the real Atlas detector looks like. If you don't have a 3D compass or a hole probe at home, you can just have a look at your mobile phones. There are several apps where you can measure the direction and the strength of magnetic fields. Now we know how strong our magnetic field is and we know how it looks like, we know the shape. But why do we actually need a magnetic field in a particle detector like ATLAS? We need it to find out what momentum and electric charge our particles have. You can't really show how this works with the whole model, but if you print and build two extra coils and you connect them to an electron gun like this, and of course you connect everything to the uh, power supplies, then you can see how the track of the electrons here, the electron beam, is deflected in the magnetic field. And this curvature we use to measure momentum and electric charge in Atlas. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to find out more about SchoolLab, feel free to go to our website. We had a lot of fun with this model. I hope you have a lot of fun with your own model. And see you in our next video. Bye!